I'm Raven Felix, and I'm an artist from the Valley and Taylor King. <laughs> um, I, th I think about, uh, there's a lot of, what is it, the word, but people really don't know about the Valley. You know, like, people really think about the Valley as, like, Valley girls, you know, like, and, like, girls, I mean, I even get it sometimes when people are like, oh, Calabasas. I'm like, Calabasas? Like, I've never even been, I've been to Calabasas maybe once in my entire life. Like, people will be like, oh, Calabasas, the valley. I'm like, that's not, <laughs> like, part of my, like, my understanding of it. But, um, no, I grew up in a town, like, I grew up uh, in Pacoima originally, and, you know, it's kind of like, it's all Hispanic, and then, you know, it's very tight-knit community, very, like, close. So I think, like, it's funny when people talk about Valley Girls and stuff. And I went to Hollywood High School, too. So, like, you know, I went to Hollywood High, and people were like, oh, you're from the Valley. You must be rich and, like, all this stuff. And I'm like, no, like, that's not how I grew up at all. So, yeah, I think there's definitely some misunderstandings about the A18, for sure. I, my interest growing up was partying. No, <laughs> no, I, uh, I... When I was growing up, I, I, I grew up really fast, you know, so because my mom was, like, always gone, and I took care of my little brothers and stuff like that. My little brother and, like, my older brother, pretty much. But um, I, I, went, I went out a lot. I was very, like, into ska shows and punk shows. Like, I was, like, you know, in the pits, like, getting beat up and stuff. I was, like, that was fun for me. I started drinking and, and, and smoking when I was, like, 13 and stuff. So, But I, I always did music, which is funny because, you know, it, when I dropped out of high school, I really let that go. For a long time, and I, I mean, for a bit, and I was like, I'm not gonna do music anymore. But it always came back to me. But no, I, I mean, you know, going out, and I, I mean, I dropped out super young, like in tenth grade. So you know, I, I like, I started working immediately, and that was pretty much all my interest was was money at the time. So no, but yeah, so I was just very much a party kid. I have a black flag symbol, um, like when it comes to punk and ska music. Um, I have a black flag symbol on my wrist, actually, that I got when I was like 16 or something. So black flag is one of my favorites. Like Henry Rollins is one of my biggest inspirations. Um, I, f I, went, I listened to like, it was like Spanish ska, so it was like Fifth Wave and like a bunch of random bands and that used to just play backyard shows. Um, God, Dipsomaniacs, because I used to listen to a lot of psychobilly music. And uh, yeah, everything. My mom was a big influence in that because she, uh, my mom really liked music like that and, and punk and music and stuff. She raised me pretty much all on that stuff. Like Sublime was like a huge in the household, which is like one of my fa personal favorites. And um, you know, like, but she was like hair metal because you know, the 80s and stuff. So like, you know, Guns N' Roses was really big in the house. My, uh, my, my mom's ex-husband, who was my stepdad, he um, was in a punk band. And so he was a drummer. When I was, I remember being like eight or nine, and she would, he would, he, she would take me to his shows, and like I would like climb up on people's shoulders and like be like a nine-year-old in the middle, midst of like all this chaos. It was great. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why my ears are so bad now because like just like the the pure sound of everything. <laughs> yeah, my mom, uh, my mom has really bad. She's chronic like back issues and stuff, so she can't really um. She can't stand up or sit down for a long period of time, and my mom had a really good job, but she had to leave it because her back was too bad and stuff. And I have older brothers and stuff, but I'm my mom's only daughter, so for me it was kind of like, I always took care of my mom, you know? And we grew up really, you know, I mean, we grew up really crazy, and there was a lot of, like, crazy situations in the household and stuff, and I was always kind of the protector of my mom. So, yeah, so I dropped out because I just figured, you know what, like, I have to be there for her and, like, make money. And that's all I was on my mind. And it was, but I was, I mean, it was funny because I was like a, a really big troublemaker in school. Like I got in like just endless amounts of trouble, like always in trouble. And um, when my mom got really bad, I just kind of, just something in me snapped. And I was like, I just need to be responsible now. And it took like a, it was a huge shift into that. And yeah, they were all pretty supportive. My friends were all pretty supportive of my decision. For the most part, I mean, a lot of my friends is crazy because I'm only 22, so a lot of my friends are still in college. And like, I don't even have a high school diploma, you know? But you know, but I'm also doing all this amazing stuff and I get to, I'm so fortunate. I, I mean, and, and there was a point where I just kind of just didn't have any friends because, you know, you're in high school, you have all your friends in your big friend group, and then all of a sudden you leave and it's like out of sight, out of mind with high school kids. I mean, you're not around anymore. So I kind of just like went face first into like working and like just, you know, like every day I was like at work at five in the morning till like nighttime, like doing as much as I could. So I lost a lot of friends over that period of time for sure. <laughs> I, I worked at uh, the, a grocery store. I was a bagger. That was the toughest job. <laughs> it was because the baggers were literally like everybody's slave or like you know like we just do everything like that everybody needs us to do and um but yeah it's it was a pretty 
tough like because I had tattoos really young so like they would make me wear like long sleeves every day to work and stuff and um, we I would have to be out like a hundred plus like degree weather like pushing carts and stuff and they didn't care I mean but yeah it was pretty difficult. Uh, I, I remember, well, music for me, I mean, like I said, was always part of my life. And then in high school, I really wanted to be a rapper. I remember that being like a huge thing for me. And I, and I, cause I saw, cause I remember hearing Beam Me Up Scotty from Nikki, like, her, like the, for the first time and being like, this is so dope, like so powerful. Like I never heard really like, like, because I was raised on like punk and rock music and stuff. So I never had heard somebody be so powerful like that, you know, like as a girl. And so I really like gravitated towards that. But after dropping out, I kind of, you know, left that behind. And it wasn't until I had a f friends bring me to other people and kind of get me involved in the music industry. And it just kind of, it clicked with me because I was like, you know what, like I can't, I have no other option at this point. Like, what am I going to do? Just like keep working at this grocery store for the rest of my life. And so I decided, like, I might as well take a chance on myself. Yeah, I was, like, watching a Henry Rollins interview, actually, and he was talking about that before I, you know, had gone into music, like, got into music full time. And he was talking about how, like, you should never say no to any opportunity and how, like, everything is, adds up to something. And it's all, like, you know, it's all, like, cosmic, you know. So it just clicked with me. And, yeah. I was 18, I think, yeah, when I finally decided to, you know, get in it, yeah. I always, I mean, I always say Nikki just because she's a huge, she's just always been huge for me. And um, Brianna's a big one too. I really like her, like the way she can do pop music, but still be like edgy and bad and, you know, be herself. And I think that, you know, with my first mixtape, California, that came out when I was 18, I just was like very rappery, rappery, rappery. But it's funny because I sang growing up and then I was classically trained like as a singer. So now I'm incorporating that a lot more. And like with the new album that's coming out, Ball of Fornication, it's kind of like, I'm trying to incorporate that. And I like the way Rihanna does, the way everything she does. And, you know, I, I, I love all the, the the people that are, you know, around my age, too. Like, they keep, I think they inspire me, like, so much. Like, Neff and, you know, and all, like, the West Coast artists that are coming up. And Pilos, you know, and all those dudes that really, like, and girls, Kamaya, I love Kamaya. All these people that make us better. And, you know, I, I there's something that, to an effect of, like, what Kendrick said about, like, I, like something in one of his verses, I forgot, but he, like, he said something to an effect of like, I love you guys, but you're still my competition. And I, but I used to, you propel me to be better. You know, so that's like, I think that's important. I like, you know, that's why I like all the new West Coast artists. I think we all keep that personally. I think she's done a lot. I think in like, you know, making it so melody and, you know, pop music so, and rap so like mainstream and putting all those things together. And I don't know, I just, I love the way she's moved. And I think that I, like I want to see her do more and more and more, and I want to see her go up and up and up, and you know. And but I love like you know, I, but I love all the like the female artists that are coming out. Like Cardi's just super dope, and like all them. And I think, but I think it's all about you know, um, like being together and like you know, like being cool with each other, you know, and making sure that each other is like supporting each other. I don't do like the beef stuff, but <laughs> like she's like no, I love. I think Nikki's done a lot for the culture and for female artists in general. Like, just incorporating that mainstream thing. We need that. I mean, like, you want to pay bills and, like, like you know, like, you want to pay bills and you want to be able to provide for your family. I mean, that's what I always go back to. So for me, like, that's always, when I see people, like, doing it big, on the big levels, I'm like, that's what I want to do. Like, that's what I want to be. You know, I want to bring money home to my mom. <laughs> that's all I care about. <laughs> oh, I, I always, you know what's so funny is if I wouldn't have been doing music, I probably would have gone to cooking school and been, like, in that, I don't know what it is, like I love cooking and stuff. But um, yeah, there's like, I had, you know, I had a lot of crazy, like, interests growing up, so there's a lot of weird things. Uh, my mom never really cooked growing up because she was never around, so, so she's always working, and so I kind of like took over for that because I had brothers, I'm like, I'm one of six, so, you know, like, so I kind of just was like, okay, like, I'll cook. There's still meals to this day my brothers won't eat unless I cook it, like, and it's like Mexican food and stuff, because I'm Mexican, so. Pozole, like, I'm really good at cooking that. <laughs> well, being around people, like, Wiz and you know like and stuff like that is in Snoop you know I got signed to Snoop when I was really young too and um, it just you know it taught me a lot because with them and the, like they're so their energy is so amazing f for the music industry and in the music industry because it's really unlike anybody else you know and they're so you know they're so hardworking and I take a lot of like inspiration from Wiz whether it's like fashion or the way he does his stage shows because he's absolutely amazing on stage and like stuff like that and but it really um 
it really propelled me forward in a way that it just inspired me to even be in those circles because for being 22 and this little kid like from the valley that you know for me I was like this is crazy you know and like being around Snoop and Wiz and and it, you know it's, it's kind of like a culture it's like not a culture shock but a shock you know like it just makes you feel like oh man like I gotta step it up <laughs> like I gotta be the best I can be you know because I want to make them proud to, to you know represent me and it's it's crazy with Taylor Gang actually because one of my I had a friend growing up and he had leukemia he passed away when we were like 16 17 and he um, he has T God on his gravestone and and years later I got signed to Taylor Gang so it just kind of was like all came full circle for me so that's what that's why it's so trippy like you know like so that's why I always I'm like for one I'm like Mike rest in peace I'm always like oh you know I, like work hard for him because I want to make him proud and because I got signed to Taylor Gang and I always say it's because of him like so it's crazy I think as a female artist it's super important you know because I think that Unfortunately, I mean not unfortunately, but you know like we always as women artists we always kind of have an, We need to have like an usher into the game kind of like but and and that's Cool in a way because we get to be like with the big dogs like you know like ride with them and you know Understand how the game works and stuff like that, but I mean mentorship in general. I think is important because You can get it by yourself, you know all you can and like you do all you can but you need to have somebody who can show you the ropes at a, a certain point. And I'm like a, I'm the type of learner where like I like to watch people do shit first, and then I can like, and then I can you know um, repeat it or whatever. And so when I, you know, that's why I like love, I mean, being on tour with Wiz and stuff because I'm about to go on my own tour um, in October. So for me, like I'm trying to take all those like elements and like incorporate them. But I think as like a, a, a female artist, we kind of have to have that little, you know, push. You know, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, um, it took a long time. It's been like four years, and there's been a lot of crazy situations where I haven't been able to release the music, what I've wanted to release, and stuff like that. And it's been so long, And I, but the thing is, I've, I've torn it apart, and i put it back together over and over and over again. And it's so nice that it's finally coming <laughs> together and coming out. I mean, like, literally, like, I, I get, like, so emotional about it because it's just nice that something that you've created is finally like okay it's finally coming like it's finally gonna be here and we're putting a lot of just um work into it like a lot of music videos are coming with it and stuff like that and i just i couldn't be happier and you know it's just a, it's a lot different than like the first mixtapes uh, my first mixtape i did but it's different in a good way and i think because i've grown so much like from being 18 to 22 you know and that's that's a huge huge gap not only just like age-wise, but just like in your, you, you grow so much in those couple years and you go through so much and, you know, I've, you know, I've gone through so much in those, those four years and I think it really, it's reflective in the music and, and I want to grow with my fans because I know a lot of my fans are around my same age group, so I like that we are all kind of like moving along together in like this life of ours and we're just kind of like, you know, they inspire me just as much, so. We take it back to the crib. Now she ain't picking up his car. Cab is awesome. And it was nice, you know, I, I love like, you know, obviously working with somebody else who's Mexican in the game, it's always, it's always good. Like, I think that we should all do that more. You know, like, I mean, there's a lot of love there. I mean, just like hometown, like love, and not hometown, but like home, you know, like community. And there's like love there, so it was awesome. He's really sweet. He, we like were going back to back on the tequila bottle. <laughs> it's probably not a bad, good idea, but <laughs> it was fun. Oh, I think it's like taking responsibility for everything. I mean, you say, I mean, being being inspiring, and not only in your music, but in you know the way you move and what you support, and being very, um, you know, adamant on the causes that you love, and and I think that's huge. I think like I, I have like a huge thing where I, I always say like. Artists need to be, you know, because p music in general is so huge right now, influentially, like socially, like we're, artists in general, like we're so, we move, I mean, we change times, we change movements, like, you know, it's just crazy. Like, we really are, like, people really look up to us so much more than now, more than ever. And we have to be, we have to be aware of that and, you know, keep that in the back of our minds at all times. What's up? This is Raven Felix and this is All Deaf Music.